Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be giving you an introduction or, or an overview to uh, one of my favorite areas of carving, and that's caricature carving. And uh, I'm going to cover things like the knife selection, uh, the technique, the, the wood, woods of choice that you're going to use, uh, finishing your carving, and uh, just a bunch of other general tips and, and uh, techniques along the way. I'm going to split this video into two parts because it could get rather long. And uh, I just want you to join with me. Let's get started. Okay, so first let's start and talk about what is caricature carving. Okay, now here are some examples that, that I have. Here's a mountain man that I carved a while back. Here's a, a hillbilly uh, wizard. I've got a uh, Martin Luther. Don't have a video on this one yet, but maybe in the future. Uh, here's your garden variety gnome. And then this time of year, it's real popular around uh, October, fall to do uh, the pumpkins. So those are some examples of uh, character carvings that I've done. Got a lot of videos of some of these, some I don't. Remember that it, when you went to the craft fair, you know, or county fair, you see the artist over there in the booth, and uh, they were drawing uh, what they call caricature drawings. Uh, you know, they're exaggerated uh, uh, facial features or body shapes, and that's exactly what we're doing here with caricature carving. You know, you see we're exaggerating a nose or exaggerating a a beard or any other facial features are exaggerated. Now when you compare that to realistic carving or realism, you might think of something like this bird here. And I did not uh, carve this, but this is a good example uh, where you're, the subject you're carving, you know, you're trying to get it pretty close to uh, look like the real subject. And you can see a lot more detail carved into the feathers here and the painting is a lot more exquisite. Um, so this compared to, you know, this, which is a caricature. When I like to think, when I like to think about the difference, when I see this type of carving, I'm going to say, wow, that's very impressive. And it is very impressive. But when I look at this one, it's going to make me smile. It's going to make me laugh. So I think you get a different, um, perspective or a different emotional reaction between these two type of carvings. Now in the carving world, you're going to hear the term flat plane carving. That's because a lot of people like to do these carvings with just the knife only. And generally you're, you're, you're carving uh, facets. You know, you can see on this pumpkin here, you can see the little facets uh, that I've carved in here. And that, that tells you that it's hand carved, that it's handmade. And that's kind of what you're looking for with these type of carvings. Now there's no hard rule that says you can't use sandpaper and you can't make it more smooth. But generally with these type of carvings, you're gonna see this, this faceted look. You're gonna see the flat planes carved around it to get the effect that this is hand carved and handmade. Now most uh, most of the the um, these carvings typically they're going to make uh, you're going to make these to stand on a shelf or stand on a table somewhere just as a figurine just as decoration. But now I like to also incorporate my carvings into uh, more functional items. This is a hiking stick topper that I made that I put on top of my hiking sticks. I've got a uh, whistle here. This is something I've been experimenting with lately. This is a hillbilly whistle and it definitely works. And then you've got the uh, a writing pen. So I like to turn pens on my lathe. So I, I took one of those pens and I carved in a wood spirit. So once you get good at this, you can take these, these uh, caricature carvings and add them as decoration to maybe some functional items that you want it, you want to use. So overall, I think that, you know, this type of carving, caricature carving, is a lot more fun. Uh, it's a great place to start as a beginner in carving. And I think it's much more forgiving. It probably allows you a lot more opportunities to be creative as well. 
Okay, let's talk about designs, patterns, and where do we get inspiration for these carvings. So one of the places I like to go to is YouTube, and I love uh, one of my favorite caricature carvers is Doug Linker. If you go to his website, he's got playlists and playlists and a lot of uh, simple one-by-one -one block type projects for, for getting started. Also check out Gene Messer's channel. He's got a lot of great instructional videos there as well. Uh, don't forget books. Don't forget uh, magazines. Uh, here's an example of a great book by Mike Shipley that I like to, to, to go to, and it's about whittling country folks. And then another favorite of mine is the Cane Topper Wood Carving Book. These books have a lot of good patterns in them, a lot of good uh, how-tos and techniques and instruction on how to do uh, these caricature carvings. Also, I would highly recommend you subscribing to Wood Carving Illustrated Magazine. These uh, magazines are chock full of uh, tips and projects for beginners, intermediate, advanced wood carvers. Uh, just really full of a lot of good stuff. I recommend, like I said, the one by one uh, block projects. Those are probably something that you want to look at starting with if you're new to this. And if you go to bigger blocks, um, this is what I mean by the one by one inch block. If you go to blocks that are bigger than this, then you might have to have something like a bandsaw, or uh, especially if you're doing a bigger carving, uh, to carve out the blank and get rid of a lot of wood. But with you know these small one by one blocks, you generally don't need any type of saw. So using patterns is also very popular if you're a beginner at caricature carving. You can find a lot of free patterns out there on the internet by just doing a search or you can look in these magazines. These books have a lot of them that you can print out at home. And then basically this is, this is an example of one that I actually created myself for my Bigfoot carving. This is a front view of him. And this is a side view. Of course, this is a little bit bigger uh, carving than a one by one, but just giving you an example. A lot of people, what they'll do is they will cut this print out and they'll glue it to the block, or they might take some uh, carbon paper, put the carbon paper down on the wood, and then put the pattern over the top of that carbon paper and trace it out. Uh, that's real popular to do as well. But if it's a real simple, like this is the five minute wizard uh, project here, which is a really great one to start with, I just simply freehand that one on there. Real easy to do. Just make sure everything's symmetrical on both sides. Like I said, the, this, this is kind of what this right here will turn out looking like, uh, the five minute wizard. But these are the type of projects that I would really uh, recommend that you start with. Uh, they're, they're smaller, easier to do. These two on the left, uh, you don't even have the, to worry about carving in the eyes. And they're just really simple, good projects to start with. Another one that I have done on my own is the football carving. And I do have a video on this. It's a real easy one. Uh, for the beginner carver and this one is a refrigerator magnet so it's not flat on the bottom obviously so you can't make it stand but I turned it into a refrigerator magnet but it's a really fun product so I encourage you to uh, check out the video on that one. Alright now let's talk about what kind of tools do you need for caricature carving. All you really need is a carving knife and these are some examples of the knives that uh, I enjoy using. DHK, OCC, uh, flex cut. Used these flex cut knives for a number of years. The roughing knife and the detail knife. And also in recent years, I got the whittling jack for uh, camping trips. And I've got a video review on this one. And then of course, Beavercraft has a lot of good affordable whittling knives as well. But I cover uh, how to choose a whittling knife in another video on my whittling basic series. So go ahead, go and check one of those out. Now, one of the things you're going to have to learn how to do is stropping your knife and keeping it sharp. 
and uh, basically all I use is this about a two inch wide leather strop and you have the leather the green compound that you put on here and uh, I will use this just about 95% of the time to keep my knives in tip-top shape I'll do it usually before I start on another pro uh, another carving project now if the blade gets say nicked or I don't know the the edge of it gets you know round and the and the the bevel on the knife needs to be uh, addressed again I'll use some wet dry sandpaper you know you might start <clears throat> down as low as 180 uh, grit and then come up to say around 600 grit but I'm going to try to put a, another video together on uh, sharpening stay tuned for that in a future video now strops are easy to make now you can buy these and I have just made this one myself I bought the leather from uh, Hobby Lobby and I used some rubber cement glue to uh, glue it on here but these are real simple to make and then you can take the wet dry sandpaper and also glue it or attach it to a strip of wood as well. I know that we've said that uh, caricature carving, flat, pl uh, flat plane carving is traditionally done by you know using one knife. But I, I don't hold that religiously. I will bring in other knives. Uh, the V-Tool uh, makes it really easy uh, in some cases. And then I've got a small uh, gouge. You can get these in, in smaller uh, millimeter uh, widths for a more detailed carving. But I, I like to use the V-Tool, uh, especially for cleaning up some of my knife cuts if, if they're not particularly neat. And I can use these for you know making wrinkles. I can use them for making um, beard hair, mustache hair and that kind of thing so they come in very handy another thing that you want to consider just for cleaning your carving and getting those little fuzzies out is just a little shoe brush or perhaps some kind of a nylon brush that's somewhat stiff but it you don't want it to be too abrasive and again you're just wiping once you get toward the end or finishing up a carving or going along the way, you use this to kind of scrub the carving over and get rid of those little fuzzies that are in there. Okay, one other tool that really comes in handy to add details to your carving is a variable uh, wood burner. The, the razor tip SK is what I use, and you've got these different settings to lower or increase the amount of heat to the tips of these burners. And I got the this one at Treeline USA, you can buy the kit with this burner and three other pins. And this little knife or skew uh, comes in handy for getting in there and, and making shadows or darkness, maybe in crevices or say in eyebrows or something like that. Just something that you don't you don't want to do necessarily with uh, with paint. You can go in there and add a dark area with something like this and then this one I haven't really used this one much this one's called a blender but you can use this to create uh, you know larger areas or darken larger areas but I really don't use this very much with the carvings but then the ball the ballpoint one yeah you can use this to do certain things like if you wanted to add a say a button uh, to a, a shirt or I guess you could even, you know, you could use this to make a, a pupil for an eye. But more commonly, I would use this to sign the bottom of my carving. So that's typically what I would use that for. Okay, guys, that's a wrap for this video. In part two, I'm going to cover wood selection, how to finish your carving, and general tips and techniques. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.